Well, hey there, Mops group. I am so glad to be with you today. I know that this is kind of a, a strange, different format than we're used to. I wish I could actually be there with you. I've been with you there before and wish I could do it again. But, you know, I read in scripture not too long ago, the verse in Psalms that says, how long, oh Lord, how long is this going to go on? And I know that is the same question that we are all asking ourselves today here in 2020. And I know, especially for you as moms, it's, it's gotten exhausting for sure. And we're ready for the old normal. You know, we, we, we're kind of used to this new normal, but we want our old normal back. And, and I know, and, and like I said, I, I can't wait to be with you again someday, but, but for now, this is what we have. And so they asked me, they said, will you, you know, talk about just, you know, how do we walk in joy? How do we laugh during this time? And, you know, I mean, it, some days I'm like, we don't have a choice except for to laugh. I mean, come on. Um, but anyway, but you know, I think that so much walking in joy has to do with our expectations and, and what we think life is supposed to be like, what we hoped life is supposed to be like, what we expected life to, to be like, it trips us up when it's not like that. And we get disappointed and we get discouraged and we want to know again, how long, how long? I'll tell you, many years ago, uh, my daughter, Brittany, she's in college now. She was probably in fourth grade when this happened, but she was invited to a birthday party. And um, without going into all the details of the party, but you moms will understand as you, you know, plan parties for your children. And um, the dad, for whatever reason, was in charge of this birthday party and he wanted it to be just right. And he invited the whole class to come and, and, but I think only like four kids came and the party was at, he owned a, a Mexican restaurant. And so anyway, Brittany and I were there and, and there was, um, I, I don't know, they served food and they had a, a cake and, and it was, it was fun. But the thing that the kids were so looking forward to the whole party was this <laughs> like literally probably four foot tall pinata. It was a stormtrooper helmet was the pinata and they could not wait. And the birthday boy especially was like, you know, they, he just kept asking over and over, when can we do the pinata? When can we do the pinata? And finally the dad said, it's time. And he pulled the pinata up into the, the ceiling of the restaurant and he gave his son the bat and his son started to, you know, bang on it like they do. And then the other children that were there began to bang on it. And then the dad gave the bat back to his son and he was like, just, you know, kill it, just da -da 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 -da, you know, um, go after it. And so the little boy just hit and hit and hit and hit until it fell to the ground and everyone couldn't wait for what was about to happen. But when it fell to the ground, nothing came out. The pinata hadn't been filled with the candy. I remember it like it was yesterday. The dad looked at me and said, does it not come filled? And I said, no, you have to, you have to buy the candy and put in it. And, and he said, well, for that price, it should have come filled. And I thought, well, my goodness, I know that's the truth. But, but anyway, and we as the, the moms that were there, we felt so badly. We were all like trying to find gum or candy in our purses to throw on the ground. And, but here's what was going on with the kids. You know what was going on? The kids were going, this is the worst party ever, ever. The son said that to his dad. This is the worst party. And I felt so badly for the dad because I, I, I knew he wanted it to be perfect. I knew he wanted it to be just this great event. And yet there was nothing in the pinata. His hopes, his, his expectations of what were going to be in there were dashed. And let me tell you something. I feel like so often that's how we look at our Heavenly Father. And we look at what's going on down here and we're like, seriously, this is the worst party ever. <laughs> this wasn't supposed to be like this. I, 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 did you not? This was the year my child was supposed to do this or supposed to do that. Or, you know, there's so many things. I think all of us can point to things and look at things in our own lives that during COVID haven't gone the way our hopes and our dreams had, had, had been for that particular thing or for that particular child or, or event or, or whatever. But we have 
to sit in knowing that, you know what? God still sees us. And he still, even in those dashed expectations, dashed hopes, there is still hope. I absolutely love the verse in Romans 15, 13, and it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you might be overflowing in hope. And who doesn't want to overflow in hope? Who doesn't want to be that person overflowing in hope? So how, how do we do that? How do we walk in all joy? And how do we walk in all peace? How do we do that? And I think part of it is realizing, you know what? Despite everything that's going on, God knows exactly where we are. He knows what we're doing. His eyes are on us. He still has a plan for us. He is still faithful. God's faithfulness goes on and on. And I'll tell you a little something about that. You know, it's been right at a year that we moved to Dallas from Houston. And there was one day that I was driving up here to Dallas, um, you know, one day and last year or the year before last, I guess. Um, I was My husband was already here and I was coming to look at some houses or something and it was pouring down rain. And I don't like to drive in the rain. And, and I will tell you something, too. I was teaching a Bible study at the time at my church on, on, on God's faithfulness. It was called Faithful, full, being full of faith. And the lesson the next week was on Noah. And we all know that God, you know, puts the rainbow in the sky, whatever. But, but that was a big part of the lesson. And anyway, as I was driving to Dallas, it, and it was just this pouring, pouring, pouring on rain. And, and I, I, thought I need to get over in the, the um, side lane because I wanted to drive really slowly. And it began to, the rain began to um, slow down and, and I could see in front of me this beautiful rainbow, beautiful. And I could see that up ahead, it was, it was clear and it was just a beautiful rainbow. And, and I remember saying, God, you know, thank you for that rainbow. Thank you for that promise that you are in front of me. You know, I envisioned that rainbow being in Dallas, right? And and that I knew, you know what? You've got plans for me there. It's going to be okay. And then as I went to go to get into that slower lane, I looked. This is crazy. But I looked in my rearview mirror. And I'm not kidding. There was a rainbow in my rearview mirror. That meant that there was a rainbow behind me and I, I couldn't like, you know, swivel my head around and look right there on the freeway. But I knew that that rainbow was behind me. And in that moment, I felt like the Lord was going, I have gone before you. I go behind you. My promises are ahead of you. And there were promises I had for you in Houston and, and things aren't over there. But look, I still have these promises. You have to go through the rainstorm to get to the rainbow, but you do, and it's so beautiful. And so I guess that's what I would say for you is that even during this time, remember, remember the faithfulness of God and remember that he loves you. And on those hard days, I'm telling you, sometimes you got to laugh. Sometimes you have to not be the mom going, God, this is the worst party ever. <laughs> but going, you know what, God, thank you for giving me these children. This is a hard day. And God, I need you to walk with me through this day. And I need you to show me some joy this day. And in this moment. But I'm telling you, he will. He will. Um, so anyway, I'll just close with just giving you this quote. Um, it's a quote from K. Arthur, uh, no, not K. Arthur, um, from K. Warren. And it says, joy, I need to read it, is this settled assurance that God is in control of all of the details of my life. It's the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. So I hope that's what we do, ladies. I hope that we praise him 
despite 2020. That's what we have to do. That's how we walk in joy. We say, I trust you, God, and we will overflow in hope. We will have all joy and all peace when we trust in him. Y'all have a good day.